everyone. Welcome to our week four craft along for summer reading. This week we are going to be making paper puppets. Now you can use these as dolls or as puppets. I like them as puppets. Um, and as you can see, their arms and legs are going to move. It's going to be a lot of fun. Let's go over what you need. If you have your kit from the library, you can go grab that. If you don't have a kit, I will tell you. So the first thing you have is this paper, which has these basic sh shapes on it of arms, legs, and a torso. If you don't have one of these, you can find these online. Um, if you search uh, paper puppet, uh, you can I will also put a link down below to the site where I got these images so that you can print your own you could also if you were feeling very artistic you could draw your own outlines of arms legs and a body and head and that would be fine too you also have these are important some little bitty paper fasteners. I'm gonna try and hold it so you can see it. So those you can get at office supply stores. If you can't find the teeny, teeny, tiny ones like we have here, you can use bigger ones and you can just make your puppet a little bit bigger and that's fine. You also have a stick. Ours is um, actually paper, a paper straw and this is kind of optional and you have two pipe cleaners and those are also optional. I'll show you um, which, how we're going to use these at the end of the video. You can choose to use them or not. You can use the pipe cleaners or the stick. You can use the pipe cleaners and the stick. It's totally up to you. Let's get started. The first thing we want to do is cut out our puppets hands and feet and body. Now I'm cutting a little bit outside the lines because I've been finding that I like my puppets to be a little bit bigger than this. So if you cut a little bit outside the lines your puppet will be a little bit bigger and that makes them a little bit easier to see. You can cut right on the lines if you want. It is up to you. So there I have one hand. All right, as you can tell, this takes a little while. So we're going to enter some movie magic and speed me up and I'll see you in just a second. All right, now that we have our cut out pieces, you can see how they're all going to go together. I like to flip mine over so that you can't see the lines on the front of my puppet. I think that looks nicer. Now we need to attach our arms and legs to the body. How we're going to do that is I'm going to draw some dots a little ways in from the corners of my puppet's body. We're gonna do all four corners and you don't want it to be too close to the edge because you don't want it to rip. And then we're going to do a dot on the end of each arm. Again, we don't want it to be too close to the edge because we don't want it to rip. And a dot on each leg. Ta-da! Now, 
there are a few ways you can do this next part. Most of them, I would recommend having a grown-up around to supervise or to help you because this is the hard part. Our little paper fasteners are not strong enough to punch all the way through the paper that we gave you, the nice um, cardstock that we printed our puppets on. So what you can do is you can use a pen or a pencil to poke holes. If you have a hole punch, you can use that to make your holes, or, and this is the one that you really want a grown up to help with. If you have a pointy end on your scissors, you can use that very carefully to poke holes in your puppet's arms and legs and body, and that works very well but you want to be very, very careful that you don't poke holes in yourself while you're poking holes in your puppet. And if you rip your puppet, that is okay. I've done it while I was making practice puppets. There are a couple things you can do. You can either put some tape on and poke a hole through the tape, or you can take your extra paper, just put the piece that ripped onto the extra paper, trace it, and cut it out, and you'll have a brand new piece without any rips. I'll do this with the pen so you can see how that goes again. Sometimes if you have a pen and you kind of scribble in the same place for a while, that will poke a hole. You can try that. But I think really asking a grown-up for help is the way to go. All right, there you go. We've got two arms, two legs, and a body. We need to put them all together. So you take your paper fastener, you put your arm or your leg in the hole, or you put the two holes lined up, I don't know if you can see that, and you stick the paper fastener through and unfold the legs on the back. And now you don't want to push these super tight because you want your arms and legs to swing like this. I like to put the arms and legs behind the puppet's body because I think it makes it a little bit easier to decorate later. But you can choose to do it the other way around. If you'd like, neither way is wrong. All right. And there we have our puppet. So as you can see, we've got our puppet and it can move and dance, but it doesn't really look like much, does it? So now we need to decorate it. And there are lots of different things you can do to decorate your puppet. You can use markers. I've got this really fancy 24 pack. You can use paper or um, if you have extra fabric lying around, you can make them close out of paper or fabric. Um, what I do to make the clothes for my puppets is I put the puppet onto construction paper and trace the puppet. And then I drew the clothes around them how I wanted them to look and cut out the clothes. So for this one, you can kind of see I traced the puppet's torso and then I drew the skirt coming off and I drew the the little puppy sleeves coming off and I used the puppet as the start of my outline. You can also just cut out shapes and see where you would like them to go. That's what I did with this bo little bow here in her hair. 
You can also see there if you want the puppets to have long sleeves instead of these short sleeves that don't move with her arms. You can trace the arms and legs and you can glue fabric onto the arms and legs before you attach them to your puppet's body. And either one of those will work just fine. And you can come up with all kinds of characters. I've made a princess and a witch and I made this nice little adventurer here so that I could see what it would look like if I just colored him with markers and I think he looks very nice and ready to go off and maybe to slay a giant or climb a beanstack. I'm pretty sure his name is Jack and he is very dancy. So you can decorate your puppet however you'd like. You can draw things, you can glue things, you can make them into any kind of character. I can't wait to see what kind of characters you guys come up with. But then, if you want to use them as a puppet, how are we going to get them to move around? The first way is you can add this stick and then you can use them like that. Their arms and legs will kind of swing free. To attach the stick, all you do is flip your puppet over to the back and you use some tape or some glue to attach the stick to the puppet's torso. That's an easy way to do it. You can also, I think we'll do this with Jack here, if you want to have a lot of control over his arms and you want the puppet to hang down like a marionette, you can attach your pipe cleaners by wrapping them around the puppet's wrists or you can glue the pipe cleaners on. I like to do it this way because then I can take them off again if I need to. And there we go. Now I can hold Jack and have him dance and move around and kick his legs. You can do both at the same time. I could have Jack with his, with a stick and with these pipe cleaners facing down instead of up. And I could, well, actually let's add a pipe cleaner to the witch so that I can show you what it's like with a stick and a pipe cleaner. So you can have your stick, have your pipe cleaner on the witch's wrist here. And then I can have her walk and I can control one of her arms at the same time. You could add a pipe cleaner to her other arm as well. You could add pipe cleaners to her feet and legs. Just know that the more stuff you add, the harder it's going to be to control your puppet. You can also decide that you like your puppets more as dolls and you can leave them without any kind of stick or controlling mechanism and you can just pose them. This would be great. Uh, there's a type of animation called stop motion which is when you take if a puppet or an object and you take a picture and then you move it a little and you take a picture and then you move it a little and you take a picture and in the end you squish all those pictures together and it looks like Jack is moving his arm because I took that series of pictures. There are lots of different um, apps you can get for your phone with your parents permission um, and your parents can help you with this. One of my favorites is uh, the app that comes with Stickbots, S-T-I-K-B-O-T-S. Um, the app is free to download and you don't need the stick bots themselves and you can use that app to uh, make some stop motion videos of your puppets. So now I'm going to let you go and, ha and let your creativity run wild. I'm going to pull out my markers 
and make hmm I don't know what this character is going to be yet but I'm sure it's going to be fun if you have ideas for what character I should make next you should let me know in the comments and I cannot wait to see your puppet creations I will see you next week bye